Hello everyone, welcome back. After last week's analysis, where we compared the best 3DS emulators currently available for Windows, it's time to test their Android versions. Has Lemonade evolved as much as its phenomenal Windows version? And Lime 3DS on Android, is it more than just a rebranding? Let's find out all of this in this video. Before we dive into the details, let's address why I left out Citra MMJ. Although the last update for Citra MMJ was in December 2023, that wouldn't be reason enough to exclude the project. However, it has a crucial limitation, it's unable to read games stored on SD cards and USB. For those following the channel, you know I test everything using my device's USB-C port. I wasn't willing to store 250 gigabytes of games on internal memory just to test this project, so I chose to leave it out. Now, let's talk a bit about the projects. Lime 3DS was the first project announced after Citra's downfall. In its initial versions, both for Windows and Android, there weren't many improvements, just a rebranding of the project. However, in version 2107, we saw significant advancements, such as shaders compiling faster and greater stability when using the Vulkan API. On the other hand, Lemonade has made significant improvements in its PC version. This is by far the most ambitious project, as it decided to merge the codes of Citra with those of Citra MMJ, which focus on higher performance and lower accuracy. In the most recent important improvements, we highlight enhancements with the OpenGL API, the implementation of a new audio API, and two improvements for those who enjoy playing with 3D enabled. Additionally, support for picture-in-picture -picture mode has been added, allowing players to shrink the game screen to use other apps without interrupting gameplay or the video being played. There have also been improvements in CPU usage, but this is only the first part of this enhancement. In previous versions, hacks were introduced that allowed the FIFA series to run smoothly, along with improvements for Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon, as shown in the video available in the card. That being said, let's go over the setup used. To run all the games, we used a ROG Phone 6 with 8GB of RAM, cooled with an external cooler. The games were stored on a USB drive with a read rate of 560MB per second. All of this was captured by an NZXT Signal HD 60 capture card at 60fps. The Vulkan API was used in all tests, and the internal resolution was set to four times the native resolution of the Nintendo 3DS. The driver chosen was Turnip Revision 18, as it is the latest and has fixed some bugs. No settings were altered during the video. Throughout the test, only unedited images will be displayed to ensure fairness. The first game tested was Animal Crossing New Leaf. In this life and farming simulator published by Nintendo, I consider that all projects ran the game smoothly, so we start the test with a tie. Unfortunately, it's not possible to run this test in identical environments, as each world is randomly generated. In the previous video, some of you reported that Bravely Default wasn't working, and the good news is that now it's possible to play it on Android normally. As for the performance of the projects, once again, we have a tie. Donkey Kong Country Returns 3D, Nintendo's beloved 8 game, also showed no significant differences between the three projects, and had similar performance in all of them. So, as of now, we have three ties. However, things can change, especially because we still have tests with unlocked FPS to determine which project truly offers the best performance. Before we move on to the next game, I'd like to remind you to leave a like if you're enjoying this content, and if this is your first time on the channel, don't forget to subscribe to receive all updates. It was in Fire Emblem Awakening that we started to see the first differences. I had already read comments on previous videos that this game had shader compilation slowdown issues, but I had no idea it was so significant. During the game test, when rendering the first battle scenes, most projects simply displayed an empty area, with objects and characters appearing slowly. However, there was one project that had fewer problems in this aspect, which was Lime 3DS. This can be attributed to the fix mentioned at the beginning of the video, which speeds up shader compilation, and it's undoubtedly an impressive result. Additionally, excessive hardware consumption was noticed by Lemonade, being the only one to show CPU bottlenecks and higher resource consumption in general. Therefore, if the focus is on the Fire Emblem franchise, Lime 3DS is the winning choice. Regarding Kirby Planet Robobot, there were also some differences between the projects. In Citra, the game performed the best, consuming fewer hardware resources, showing few stutters, and smooth gameplay. In Lemonade, the game also had decent gameplay, although it consumed slightly more resources. Lastly, Lime 3DS, 
which at some points consumed double the resources of Citra to maintain smooth gameplay in this title. In Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon, despite having received enough improvements to be playable on PC, its state on Android is still poor. At the mentioned resolution, which is four times the 3DS resolution, the game simply didn't even come close to running on my device. In this test, Lime 3DS performed much better, with almost double the FPS. Lemonade, in its default settings, has long pauses when compiling shaders, making any attempt to progress in the game unfeasible. And Citra simply refused to start, causing crashes and even device restarts. In Mario Kart 7, racing at 150 cubic centimeters speed, we obtained similar results between the projects. It seems that Citra has slightly lower CPU usage, but nothing too relevant for our tests. I consider this a tie. And now, finally, we'll have our unlocked FPS test before the track test to analyze the best project. Unfortunately, on Android, we don't have a program that averages FPS like on PC, so I had to analyze manually. Although Lime 3DS has the highest FPS result, it also has the lowest, so I believe it must have the highest variation in frame time. Additionally, it seems that Lime 3DS has issues utilizing the full power of our GPU, while Citra and Lemonade use about 97% of the capacity. Lime 3DS can't surpass 93%. Finally, let's lock the game natively at 30 FPS and do a track test to see if it's rendering correctly, as on Windows, objects often flickered or simply became invisible. As you can see, Lime 3DS practically minimizes this problem. The gameplay isn't perfect, but in few instances, we see Jill or the entire environment being built in front of us, while Lemonade and Citra still have a delay after objects appear, causing many issues like stutters. Super Smash Bros. is also another excellent game for benchmarking due to the variety of characters and many shaders to compile. The test is being run with four characters on screen, and although they're not the same characters, the battle scenario is the same. Although the game appears to be locked at 51 FPS, the projects are actually suffering from slowness and running at about 85% of the 3DS speed. Overall, I would say the result is a tie because both Citra and Lemonade achieve satisfactory, but not perfect results. Lime 3DS, on many occasions, runs the game at only 40 FPS, which is almost half of what's needed for decent performance. Therefore, for Smash Bros., I don't recommend using Lime 3DS. And when I analyzed the games on Windows, people asked where the Zelda franchise games were. First, Zelda, A Link Between Worlds, where there was again a technical tie, there were no issues compiling shaders or any other visual problems. Finally, Zelda Majora's Mask 3D. This game again presents problems with slow shaders in Citra, but the situation also repeats with Lime 3DS compiling the shaders much faster, almost instantly, while in Citra and Lemonade, the new movements take some time to compile. This directly results in lower CPU usage by Lime 3DS. Citra and Lemonade don't disappoint, but they certainly have a worthy competitor to run this game. In conclusion, Lime 3DS, despite seeming like just a rebrand on Windows, behaved well in many games on Android, while in others, like Smash Bros., it performed worse. With all the improvements it has been receiving, it has the potential to be the best Citra replacement for Android at the moment. If we're talking directly about Lemonade, we could say that it really is just a Citra rebrand, there's practically no innovation at this point. Not even the game that received the most fixes, Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon, runs as well as it does on Lime 3DS, for example. And that was the video. I hope you enjoyed the nerdy information that was provided. Thanks for your viewership, and until next time.